Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Sarah Hughes and I'm a Senior Vice President here at Candy Communications over customer experience. And uh, today our fireside chat topic is an update from our friends at Poly, what some of you may know as Polycom is now Poly. And um, we have um, several people on the team here to share with you. So we're gonna go through introductions and then I'm gonna hand it over to Dave Finney with Polly and he's gonna go through all of the updates uh, that he has for us. So please stay to the end because we also have a demonstration. Dave's story um, is gonna give us a demonstration of the Poly headsets along with the Smart Office desktop. Um, you can see that we're gonna hear a lot about some supply chain procurement stuff I know many of you have been asking about. We'll also hear about some upgrades and some new phones, some new product lines that they have and also talk about about working from home um, using their products along with ours. So with me today, as I mentioned, Dave Finney. He's the Director of uh, Solution Architects for the Global Alliances uh, at Poly. He's been with them for a very long time and uh, he, uh, we're very happy to have him. He's been a, a strategic partner of Candy's for a long time. Dave Story, who's part of our product management team over our clients. Uh, with Candy and uh, Jason Whitaker uh, back with us today. He handles all of our interop integration testing specifically with devices and you can see where he lives uh, in wall-to-wall -wall phones and devices behind him there. So um, anyway, we're very happy to have all three of them here with us today. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over and have uh, Dave Finney start with an update on Polly. And just logistics wise, <clears throat> if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat and then I will uh, MC those and we'll get those answered as we go along. But thank you so much. So Dave, take it away. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks for being here everybody this morning and everybody being here this morning. And uh, I think that that's Jason's bedroom. So it's kind of <laughs> interesting that he has all those phones, every time I talk to him, like uh, you wake or sleep, uh, but he's got all these phones in his bedroom, amazing stuff. So a little bit of history of Polly. I just wanna talk about uh, who Polly is and where we came from a little bit. For those of you that aren't familiar, I think a lot of you are familiar with our phones, but from a little bit of a background perspective. So Polly is a combination of Plantronics, the headset company, and Polycom, the audio video company. And we combined in 2019 to form the company Polly. But what's really interesting for us is that with Plantronics, we were the first headset on the moon. So we've been doing headsets for a long time. So when Neil Armstrong made his pronouncement from the moon, whether you believe he was on the moon or whether you believe he was on some soundstage somewhere, he was using a Plantronics headset at the time. And then of course, the, the Poly Legacy uh, three-winged conference phone that, that you see is pretty prolific in conference rooms everywhere. That's how Polycom got its start in 1990. And then we've add, uh, add subsequent products, video products and other phone products to the portfolio over time. And when we combined into a single company, we didn't have headsets and Plantronics didn't have phones and video devices. So it was a perfect match for us. And now we're a $1.7 billion company with a ton, ton of patents supporting all the Fortune 500 and 1000 companies. And we're, we're doing really well. And we do believe that we absolutely make the best audio products and video products on the planet. The cool, interesting thing, Sarah, if you can pop that up for me, is that um, is uh, we're being bought by HP. And so there's a lot of, a lot of uh, talk in the industry of this right now. So there's been a definitive agreement signed. And hopefully that business, that deal will close sometime this fall. And for us, it takes us from a $1.7 billion company to part of a $60 billion company and adds a lot of things, a lot of strength to the company, like uh, you know more financial support plus a product set that we don't have that, and, a, and, a, and for HP, a product set that they don't have. So think about work from home and hybrid environments now where we're gonna be able to supply all of the headsets and the video devices and speakerphones plus the PCs and the printers. And it, it's gonna be a really interesting a really interesting deal and opportunity for us going forward. So we're pretty excited about the HP uh, integration. If you have any questions on that, please let me know. Can't tell you much more than I know because I'm not involved in the integration, but that's what we know. So Sarah, can you go to the next slide, please? So what is Poly about? Uh, we're about total equality. Uh, so we wanna make sure that folks that are in 
a meeting room to have the same experience, whether you're in your home, whether you're at the airport, whether you're in some coffee shop somewhere. So when people are meeting together, either point to point or multi-point, there's an equality of experience. And we do that by building really good headsets and really good camera technology that allows that, that, that kind of opportunity to happen. So next, Sarah. So the mission statement is people plus technology plus spaces. Where do people work? How do we make them work better? How do we deliver the future of work? Next, Sarah. And next again. So the idea is that people equal work. It used to be for me in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, I would go to my place of work. Now I just work anywhere. So now it's about where I am and my ability to work wherever I'm at. So whether it's in Mexico sitting on a beach, and yes, oops, if you can go back one. If it's in Mexico sitting on a beach, I'm working. Golf course, yep, working. Um, so vacations, I know that's that's probably taboo, but the, the point is, is that I can work anywhere. I can work on an airplane, I can work in a coffee shop, I can work in my car, and it's up to me, it's up to Polly to provide the equipment and the tools that I need to be able to work in those places. So work is no longer a place you go, it's just what you do and who you are. And it's up to you to control the hours that you work and how you manage all that, but we want to provide the tools to give you the best experience, that equality of experience that I talked about, wherever you are and wherever you're working. So next, Sarah. So here's how we do this. We provide a lot of uh, devices, uh, conference phone devices, that legacy, Starship conference phone, as many people call it, video endpoints, desktop phones and headsets. Uh, those came from the combined Holly Plantronics company. And then software to manage all that, to install and to maintain and to, uh, to inventory and things like that. All of our products out there. So from an IT perspective, the ability to remotely manage all these products. And then a full suite of service and support that allows you to, to buy into some additional service and support to help you uh, to keep your networks up and running. If you skip to the next one there, Sarah. What we do and what we've done over the last decade or so is we've tried to identify work styles. We call them personas or work styles, and we've, we've created these six categories. And from these six categories, we build product to fit and work for those people in those categories. So if your work location is mainly the office, we have great desk sets and headsets that will plug into that, plus camera and speakerphone technology. Or if you're like me, your work location is pretty much anywhere. You're a road warrior. I've got portable cameras and portable headsets and portable speakerphones that I can take with me. So if I'm having a meeting in a hotel, I've got great camera, I've got great speakerphone, or I got a great headset. If I'm walking around the trade show floor and I'm using an app on my phone, I've got a really good headset that works with the uh, the phone app, whether it be Smart Office or Teams or Zoom or any of those other ones that are out there that are supported by a lot of people. I've got the ability to, to take and, and be on a call and to be heard clearly, that equality of meeting like I talked about. So we build products based on these lifestyles, work styles, I don't know more lifestyles. So these, these work styles in this research that we do help us to say, ah, this is what we need in this particular, for this particular work style, style, let's go off and build a device that, that, uh, that supports that. Next. This is the current device family lineup. So when we talk about phone or audio, poly voice devices, and we're not gonna talk about headsets, we'll talk about that later. We're not gonna talk about video, we'll talk about that later on. But for the voice side, that desk phone side, in office, in building desk phone, and even at home in your remote office, these, these are the phones. We have the Edge B series, our low end series. We have the VVX series, our flagship series of phones, the ones that are most widely deployed in, in the world, in the networks in the world today. We have the CCX series, which is relatively new. It's touch screen, it's higher end. And then we have our ATAs for those fire alarms and elevators uh, when you need to go from analog to IP, those adapters. Then the Trio uh, series at the bottom, that legacy poly flagship three prong conference phone that we do so well that we've done since 1990. And then we have a whole decked lineup of programs for in-building wireless. So if you can click one more time, Sarah. So currently on the platform are the VVX phones, the CCX phones, the ATAs, and the TRIOs. So when you talk to the folks at Candy and you need, you need a device, these are the phones that we've currently onboarded. And if you can click again, we are working 
on the edge B and the uh, Rove products. We have some specific requests for the deck products for the D230 and the Rove series products on the platform, and we're working to get them on with Jason to get them on the platform. Next, Sarah. <clears throat> so what I did is I put a, get together a couple of charts that actually show where we are, uh, latest firmware, whether they're certified on KBS or not. And if you go to the next one, you'll see this was current and new, and these are older EOL products. So you can just very quickly look and see what's out there uh, when you get this presentation. Also on the Candy Partner Portal, there's a, a supported devices document, which is really, really thorough. It's, it talks about not only devices and software, but it talks about the features that are supported on each of these devices. So thank you, Jason, for, for keeping that up for us. Next. And we update that uh, every quarter. So um, it's a, a good idea to stay current with that. Yep, it shows the CCXs out there, which we just were just onboarded here recently. So that's great. And then I wanted to put this in here because there's there's so many changes. Uh, we have had so many product lines over the years uh, with regard to phones that I wanted to put this up here just so you have it and also put a, uh, a link in that you can do an end of life search on your own if you're not sure. And if you're not sure what device replaces what as we move forward. So this is just a quick, quick reference chart. Not gonna spend a lot of time here, but it's in the presentation for your viewing pleasure and also the link uh, so you can find information on your own. And of course you can call me anytime, reach out to me by email, call me, I'll talk to you about anything that has to do with KBS and Poly. Next. So we're going to talk about our desktop portfolio. So you can just skip this one, Sarah. This is just a filler slide. But before I got in, before we get into the actual phones, I want to talk to you about zero touch provisioning. So KBS has been using Poly zero touch provisioning for a long time. Zero touch provisioning is the ability to power on a phone, have it reach out to our cloud, and then have it redirected to the, the Candy provisioning server. So we've been doing that for a long time. We're coming out with a brand new version of that in uh, June 1st, really, I think is our flash cut day. <clears throat> that gives you a, a better, more intuitive user interface, uh, better API support, better account management and scalability. Some of the things that we've struggled with in, with Candy over the time, and they brought a lot of this to our attention, we worked through it, is, the, is just the account management capabilities and how we were able to uh, expand the number of partitions, if you will, that they had. We had some limits there because of the way it was tied into our backend systems. All of those things go away. And now we're a, a pretty a pretty scalable system going forward. And everything that's on the system needs to, to support mutual TLS or support TLS 1.2, which means that there are older phones that just simply don't support it and they will not be on the list. So if you skip to the next slide, Sarah, <clears throat> these are the phones that will be supported on the new version of, of TLS or of uh, ZTP. So I'd like to encourage you, if you don't see the phones on the list, if you have some older legacy phones, we would love to talk to you about getting those phones off the platform and getting the newer phones on. And I'm, I'll make you a deal. Just, just not a sales guy, so I'm just talking. But, <laughs> but anyway, so we would, we would love to get you. We would love to get you on the platform, and we'll do what it takes to get get you with uh, newer phones on the platform. We have all kinds of trade-in and rebate programs, or things that we can do to talk about. But these are the products going forward, and then of course, all of the newer products that we'll talk to you about will be on the platform uh, eventually as well. And, Next slide. and Jason, Jason Whitaker, um, did you want to talk yeah. about the 7,000 here? Yeah, I just wanted to give everyone a, a quick um, heads up. We're, we're going to send out a, uh, a a partner customer notice. Uh, the 7,000s, we... Uh oh Sarah, we Factory defaulted, we'll Jason. try to add a new 7,000 once uh, the Can move happens to that, the new... Can you repeat that, Jason? I think your audio clipped, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me clearly now? Yes. Okay, I'm just saying we're going to send out a partner bulletin about the, the we see on the portal that will not uh, work. Okay, it sounds like so we're having we're some technical portal. difficulties yeah. with which is, I think what Jason, uh, I think Jason is saying is that the IP7000, the SoundStation 7000 is not going to work because it doesn't support mutual TLS and you'll, you'll get notified. There are other of the old legacy SoundStation products pre-5000, 6000, 7000 plus the older sound, SoundPoint IP phones that will not work on the platform because they don't support mutual TLS. <clears throat> so everything that uh, that's going to go, everything going forward 
uh, those phones will still work on the KBS platform. They just, if you do a factory reset, you're going to have to use some other method like DHCP option 66, or you're going to have to type in the provisioning server address on the phone uh, to get it to get to the provisioning server because it, they won't be supported on CTP. Yeah, and, hey, and what, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But um, again, they will continue to work with us. But if you were to do a factory default on the phone, it would try to pick up zero touch provisioning. And um, it, yes, it, it will be, Martin, it will be the same zero touch provisioning IP address and all that kind of stuff. So that should be no change to any of uh, your customers. It's just the sound station IP 7000 doesn't support um, what the new zero touch provisioning from Poly has. So those will still be connected, but they would have to, in their DHCP scope, point them when they get an IP address to the IP address of the, the uh, call agents. And those kind of things will be in release notes and we'll send out a uh, notification as well. So just, um, just know it'll still work, but it won't work through zero touch provisioning. It could still work through uh, dynamically assigning that uh, through your DHCP scope. Okay. So the databases from the existing ZTP are all going to be migrated to the new ZTP. So all the KBS phones that are supported, that are currently on the legacy ZTP system will be migrated over. So if you factory reset a phone after June 1st, it should just work like normal, as long as it's a supported phone. So there's nothing really that the customer that KBS has to do. Uh, the thing that, that Jason and the, the team are doing are looking at how to better use some newer APIs and, and make life easier on the provisioning side. Doesn't necessarily affect a lot of you out there as customers, but you know we'll, we'll clean up some things on, the, uh, on, the, on our current existing CTP interop. And so there's no Jason, more questions, when, Sarah? Well, when do we believe that that uh, will take place, that conversion? You think that's May or June timeframe? Jason Whitaker. We don't cut Sarah until June, so it'll, it'll have to be after June, but pretty, okay. I think that the team is working, uh, uh, Don Fisher and the team are working hard to, to, to be ready for that. And Stephen Chen is out there somewhere. Maybe Stephen can uh, give us an update in the, in the questions. I don't think he's able to talk at this point in time, but if he's out there, he might be yeah. able to give us some more. Update. Yeah, so June, okay. June, July, August time frame. You're back, Jason. Yeah, it'll be, it'll, yeah, it'll be in June, and of course the, the customers will see nothing. Correct. Okay, good deal. All right, let's go to the next. Okay, and we'll go to the next. So this is the current desktop portfolio. Like I said, the VVX X50 series, uh, the legacy business media phones. So we call the X50 series Gen 3 VVX. What you see on the right is Gen 2 VVX. Those are being retired, although they are still out there. They will still work on ZTP. They'll still work on the platform. They'll still support the latest versions of software. Uh, so, uh, but, but we just we don't have quantities to sell anymore. The, the 501 and 601 that you see the color screens with the little uh, Pac-Man icons up in the upper left are end of sale as of last June. So they've been in the sale for almost a year just because of shortages on chips and things like that. The 411, which is the one in the right-hand corner, upper right-hand corner, is still out there, still available in some quantity to sell. But for the most part, people need to buy. You need to buy the VVX X50 series. And go ahead, Sarah, to the next slide. So what we've had with the X50 series is uh, the supply chain shortage, which is everybody on the planet is having supply chain shortage. We're fighting for the same chips that for refrigerators and F-150s and everybody are fighting for. So we're we're now to a point where on the on the X50 series, beginning in with 6.4.3 here coming up at end of May, beginning of June, we will have a new chipset in the 250, 350, 450, and the expansion module on the VVX X50 series. So what that allows us to do is it allows us to manufacture in mass again. So you'll see our manufacturing ramp up and our limitations start to go away over the course of the, uh, from July through the end of the year, as we start to manufacture phones, the VVX phones with this new chipset and the new software. So the new software 
these phones will not be able to run any newer version of the phone. They'll lock themselves in at 6.4.3 or above because there are drivers for those chipsets that have to be in the software that are not in the earlier versions. The existing X50 versions will run 6.4.3, so they can be upgraded to 6.4.3, so that's not a problem. But the newer versions won't run anything but. And so what we'll have is a lot of transition period will be emptying distribution, June, July, August, of the existing phones, and we'll be adding the new phones into distribution. And it should be pretty seamless. You really shouldn't know that it's happening because it's the same phone. We haven't changed any feature functionality. We've done a ton of testing. Uh, they work just like the existing VVXs, just with the new chipset, so that we don't have supply issues. So if you go to the next, I think candy support for that is going to be in 53.2 for that version, 6.4.3. We're currently testing that in our SQA environment, and we should be handing Jason a, a test plan, a completed test plan here in the next couple of weeks uh, so that he can uh, add 6.4.3 to the provisioning server. You'll notice, though, that there are some changes. We will be able to notify you with, uh, with uh, the changes on the phones, and this is just an example. But, if, Sarah, I think if you go back, if you can go back for me, there's a, the red link there. That is the shipping change configuration notice. All of this is described in brutal detail. And if you can't find that, send me an email and I'll get it to you. But everything that I'm talking to you about is, is, in, that, is in that shipping change notice. So if you go back, Sarah, want to... Yeah, and we'll be sharing this presentation to everybody who registered. So, and you can share this with others too. Yeah, yeah. Including these pictures. So... Yes. Yeah, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to see on the phone, on the box, on the shipping label that it is a different version number. And that's just to let you know that it's a different version number. So if somebody calls and says, hey, uh, I can't, you know, this my phone doesn't downgrade or whatever. You can say, well, it's not going to because it's this version. It's the newer phone. It's only going to run at 643. But feature functionality wise should work exactly the same as the old VVXs. And we work really hard to make sure that's the case. We, we don't want any disruption in what we're doing with the VVXs because they are our flagship phone and, and they, they are the, the phone that sells the most on the Candy platform. So next slide, Sarah. And again, if you have any questions, let me know. So the new Edge V series, this is our low end. If you wanna to skip to the next slide, uh, Sarah, a little better detail. Uh, we have three models. Uh, B10 is a PSU only. Uh, B20 is the same phone with a PoE. And then the B30 is a four-line phone with gig ethernet and PoE. And you can see the prices there at the bottom. Uh, don't worry about the discount levels. Uh, you can deal with your sales guy on that. But, but uh, sub $100 phones is really where we want to be. And uh, we, we, we primarily built these for uh, rest of world. And we're finding out that there's a, a good uptick in uptake of these within the Americas as well. Whereas we thought the VVX would be you know, the key line, and it is, we didn't think there'd be a, a real place for these, but there is. Uh, they're a great poly phone. They work just like any other poly phone. They are great sound quality. You can see all the buttons, easy to use, easy to navigate. So they're just like the VVX line or the, the legacy VVX lines, um, but a little bit cheaper. Uh, so there so we have a question from the field about, do you see any issue working together old rev models and new rev models? You can interchange those, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. Correct. So you can leave the old rev models, old rev VVX models, exactly the same. You don't have to upgrade them at all. If they're running at 5.9.6 or 6.4.2, you can just leave them, let them run. And, and then the new models will come in and you can have... Uh, a new model on Sally's desk and an old model on Bob's desk, and they could be right next to each other in cubicles, and you'd never know the difference. So, no. And management-wise, you know, wouldn't know the difference either. And then similarly, I have a follow-up question on that. Would there be any issues with transfer park, those kind of things? As long as those rev models, those firmware models, if, if they show in our documentation that the supported devices, that it supports that, both of them support that, then there should be no issues at all with mixed yeah. functionality. Yeah. We, we wanted to make sure that the new version, remember we're running 6.4.3 UCS. It's the same software that that is based 5.9.6 or 6.4.2. The only difference that we've made in 6.4.3 is we put different drivers in to, to make those chipsets run so we can drive the screen, we can drive the buttons, et cetera. It has nothing to do with feature function. The feature function is identical, you know, across the line. So any button that you push is going to be the same on either phone. 
So the CCX uh, line, a uh, newer line, um, uh, all touch screen, no buttons. People like this. Uh, it gives you a, a more mobile look and feel from a phone user interop perspective. Uh, the CCX 600 and 700 support video. Uh, the CCX is uh, an add-on camera. The CCX 700, you can see there's a little dot up above the, the screen there. That's the actual built-in camera. Uh, seven inch screen works really well for video. If you don't want to use your PC and you want to have uh, be on a, a video call, you can use your CCX 600 or 700. You actually use the 500 video calls. They just won't be able to project into the call. Really good. You can actually see content really well. If somebody's showing content in a video call. Uh, so really nice phones, but it, it, it's, it's above the VVX line. It's, so you have the, I'll show, it, I'll show you in a minute, but it's above the VVX line. It's a little more pricey. You can see there's Wi-Fi, there's built-in Bluetooth, uh, there's built-in cameras. Uh, and also these phones, and I didn't show a picture here, you don't have to buy them with the handset. So imagine, if you will, from the handset over, it's just the, uh, it's just the screen. And you can plug a headset in, but it really has a very good poly uh, speakerphone and mic, so you don't even need a headset. But if you want privacy, you can plug a headset in either via Bluetooth or, or wired into the USB port. So this, and did you say that this is kind of like Android environment, kind of? It's an Android environment, so that in fact, if we ever get to that point with Candy, if we want to put the Smart Office mobile client on here, we could absolutely do that. So that's that's a discussion that we've had. Uh, and if there's any requirement for that out in the fields, please let us know. These products were onboarded onto the platform as OpenSIP devices today, just like the VVX supporting the same functionality uh, per a customer. A customer asked for it, so we went and did all the testing, and then Jason was kind enough to, to get them onboarded on the platform for a specific customer. So we're hoping that we, we start to see these more and more. They are the higher-ended phone in line, but, but they are really, really a nice phone, really good sound quality, really good speaker mic capabilities and camera capabilities. So if you want to jump to the next one. So this is what the lineup looks like today. I just want to give you a visual so that you know. The Poly Edge V, not quite onboarded yet. The VVX in the middle and then the CCX. So this is, this is the lineup today. Now what we're doing, go ahead, Sarah. What we're doing is we're introducing a new phone line. I'll show you how that all fits in in a minute but we're introducing what we call the Edge E phone. So we've seen the Edge B, now we have the Edge E, so we're not calling them VVXs anymore. So Sarah, if you wanna jump to the next slide. So this is a preview slide. Uh, these models will be available in the July timeframe. They're going through beta right now with certain customers. Uh, and within my team, uh, the, we're, we're, all, we're all testing these locally. But you can see there's some difference, you know, cream color, more grays, less black, not rounded edges like the VVX. Uh, still HD voice, but what you can see in the lineup is from the, the VVX 220 or the E-Series e 220 all the way up to the 550 Bluetooth. And then there's Wi-Fi across the platform as well. So it gives us it gives us a little bit more. You don't have to worry about like in the VVX environment today, oh, I got to have a Wi-Fi dongle and I've got to have a Bluetooth dongle to, to make Bluetooth work. No, nope, we're going to we're going to integrate all that. And if you use a poly headset with these phones, like I've got, I use a, a, a Voyager 2. That Voyager 2 plugs in USB or via Bluetooth adapter into the, the USB and it creates kind of a wireless environment. So I don't have to necessarily pair to the Bluetooth radio on the phone. I can just plug a USB adapter in, a BT600 to BT700, and have the phone just automatically use that dongle if I want. And it creates kind of a wireless connection. It's a, it's a well paired, and I'll talk about this with the uh, when we get there. But it's a well paired, uh, a permanently paired between that that dongle and that headset. But the point is, you can use headsets, and you can use you can hang up and et cetera, answer and hang up from the headsets. You know, all that is synchronized. So we put NFC tagging in there for futures. Uh, so it is really our future look. So imagine, if you will, this is the this is the device family, the Edge B, the VVXs the Poly e, Edge E series, and then the CCX series. And then eventually what will happen over time is the Edge E series will creep up into the VVX business and the VVXs will go away, but that's not for two or three years, so a long transition period here. But what Edge E also does is it solves for us the supply chain issue. We're, we're not announcing a phone that we can't supply. So we pre-bought all kinds of chips and we've 
we're using newer chips from the manufacturers because when the manufacturers with COVID and everything, they just decided, hey, we're going to we're going to stop manufacturing that chip line. We're going to go to this chip line. And that's what really screwed everybody up in a lot of ways was just the supply chain change, as well as everything being shut down for COVID and not being able to manufacture. Then when they came back to work, they said, well, we don't need that anymore. We're going to do this. So everybody's had to make those changes. So the CCXs, the Edge E, the Edge B series are all built on new chip platforms. The VVX series is moving to a new chip platform, but eventually the Edge E will replace the VVX over time. Don't, don't panic. Not going any way, anywhere soon. You got to get them on platforms. They've all got to be tested. They got to be proven in the market on the service provider platform. So we expect to see the Edge E series probably start to take off and run hard in January timeframe. And then we'll see an eventual drawing down of the, the VVX uh, X50 series over time. But for now. And, and another so. question came in on the VVX, uh, the chipset updates for the X50s. When are they going to be available um, in the market? June. June okay. And you'll start to see them ship in quantity probably July timeframe. As we, as the, as our manufacturing lines come up, we draw down on the, uh, the existing chipset manufacturing because we got to run those out as well but we'll start to see that happen in july time frame where it'll start to show up in distribution so perfect well thank you for um from all of us <laughs> to polly thank you for doing this because it has been hard to find these phones and um yes. So uh, this is this will help tremendously. This is great news. Yeah, I think after after July with the new with the new edgy line with the VVX upgrades, we're not going to have any supply chain issues in the mid range phones. So it's going to be fun to to get back to work and really really help you all you know put Poly on the platform because we 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 do believe that we make the best the best phones on the planet. So so Rove uh, the Rove family pretty interesting for us. So uh, what you see here is you see. Um, couple of handsets, one blue, one white. The white one is, is it, it kind of works well in the hospital environment, works really well anywhere. It's got an emergency button on it, but white is always considered sterile. And it also has built-in Bluetooth, whereas the, the blue one on the left doesn't have built-in Bluetooth, doesn't have an emergency button. So it's a little cheaper, but it's the same form factor, same phone functionality-wise. And then you can see the little base and repeater there that the repeater and the base look exactly the same. So this is our decked handsets and you can see they're ruggedized, drop proof, IP65 dust and water, and uh, very scalable. So if you go to the next slide, Sarah, it's no longer our uh, VVX D230, which I'll talk about in a minute, but this will go from up to 20 concurrent calls of handsets with two B2 bases. If we go to the B4 base, we can go up to 2,000 concurrent calls, uh, 15,000 square feet, a thousand handsets registered so we can do warehouses or grocery stores or small clinics with this product so if you need in building wireless decked is the way to go and we have a deck product to, to help you with that we don't have a decked desk phone yet that's something that we're looking at but it is it is strictly in building mobile today so think of home depot and think of hospitals and places like that where people are on the go we have the ability to work with you on that now uh, we used to own Spectralink back in the day, and we had it with them, but uh, we haven't had a, a decked uh, um, uh, solution like this, a system like this. And so we do now. It's called the Poly Row. So if you want to jump to the next slide, Sarah. One of the questions came up about timing sure. for this. So we um, we don't have this uh, a time frame yet, um, but we are yeah. working towards that. Yes, it's TBD based on uh, customer request, <clears throat> and then we've got to get it in into our SQA. All of the testing that we do for KBS, just to be frank with you, is done through our SQA. We test on behalf of KBS using KBS resources, you know, remotely. You know, we've got tons of accounts from Jason, and that's how our SQA folks test. Then they hand off a, a test plan to Jason, and then he does his magic on the on the portal side. We just haven't had a lot. We do have a request for Rove now, so we're working to schedule that. So within the next couple, three months, we should have some information on, you know, exactly when we might be able to get this on the platform. So but we have another have question any... about the 
feedback as well about the frequency. Um, is there a certain frequency, or can it be changed? Um, uh, it's it's a uh, it's the American version. I think it's 19. I can't. I I would have to I would have to research that. I can't answer it off the top of my head. But no, there there's the European version, and then there's the North American version. And so we're 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 on the North American version, which man is it 1900? I I I don't want to answer that off the top of my head. Okay, well, we'll follow up on that then. Okay, great. So next slide, Sarah. So th these are our first phones that came out that were treated with microban. Made sense. They came out in the middle of the pandemic. They're kind of self-cleaning phones. They can still be cleaned. If you, you remember the keyboard, it looked like it was really sealed really well. They can still be cleaned with a wet cloth. They are IP65 uh, uh, rated. But the microban treatment in the plastic does help them self-clean. So you can see on the on the left, untreated and treated with microband, we built it right into the plastics. It's on all of our phones now. So the phones are, are pretty much self-cleaning, which is really kind of cool. You know, on this in this post-pandemic world, it's not as big of a thing as it was a year ago, but it is when the phones came out, but it is still a pretty cool thing. And we have a we have an exclusive microband for the next four or five years. So you'll see all of our products will, will have that in there. Next. So this is the D230. This is the guy that came out originally uh, for, to support uh, uh, DECT. And uh, think of this as a single base station, which you see there, up to uh, 10 handsets registered to that base, uh, eight different registered lines, and eight simultaneous calls. There's no repeater. There's no deck to, to There's no base-to-base -base communication. It is strictly an isolated uh, um, uh, system. So imagine, if you will, uh, you know, a pizza restaurant or a restaurant or a small business where uh, somebody just needs to move from their desk to a copy machine or something like that, and they don't need repeaters and they don't need multiple bases and they don't need more than more than ten handsets uh, registered to that base. So small office environment. Very good though. Very good in the workplace. Uh, we've had a lot of success with it. Now, that said, the base is an issue. We're working on supply chain issues with the base. Uh, and we will we will reconcile those here in the next couple three months where we will have bases available. But the the chipset for the base has been been a problem for it. So just to, just to let you know, but we are working to get it onboarded on the platform anyways. Rove will come first. That's the the customer request right now is for Rove, and then the G two thirty will come sometime in the future. Next, Sarah. Speaker form phone. Yeah, yeah, you can tell I'm getting dry. It's Arizona. So these are our conference series phones. You're all familiar with these. These have been around since 1990 in this form factor. They're a little more rounded in the old days, but these are the current available uh, conference phones on the platform. Note, I think Sarah, if you click one more, yeah, the 8500 is going to go uh, end of sale in June. So we'll have three available on the platform: the C60, the 8800, and the 8300. So think. Uh, small, medium, and large, starting with the 8300 being small, 8800 medium, and the, and the C60 being large. So that just it, it's room size, it is uh, the ability to daisy chain. There's a lot of things. If you have a conference phone question, please give me a call. I'm not gonna I, I'm not gonna explain all this here. But uh, and the the data sheets do have recommendations on size, room, and and that kind of stuff. So those are all they, good. Uh, yeah, for sure. And then, and then the uh, you know they have expansion mics, et cetera. So the sync family, if you want to jump one more, this is our th these are our conference phones, but they are USB plug and play. So I have one sitting here on my desk, a Sync 20 that I have plugged into my PC, and I can use this today. I'm using my P15 as my speaker microphone, but I can use my my Sync. I can throw this in my briefcase and carry it with me. So if I'm in a hotel or wherever, and I think Sarah's use cases, she carries hers on the road with her and she's able to have really good uh, speaker mic capabilities in a hotel room or, or, when, or, or somebody's office when she's traveling. Simply plug and play, plug it into the USB port on your PC and uh, it's, it's available to you. So we made them in three sizes. We made the personal size, we made the 40 and the 60 to fit different room sizes. So imagine, if you will, you walk into a huddle space or to a conference room, there's a C60 or a Sync 60 or Sync 40. You walk up with your PC, you plug your USB cable in from the sync into your PC, you fire up your smart office client, and you're good to go. 
you don't have to worry about a conference phone on a table. You don't have to worry about a registered, a conference phone not being registered or whatever. You, you're able to, to work with your PC. So kind of bring your own device to that room and then plug your speakerphone in. And, and we've used so, them for our, um, using our smart office collaboration for our Candy Town Hall internal staff meetings, you know, all hands meetings kind of stuff. And um, it's been great. Yep, yeah, absolutely. So here's the conference phone lineup. We got the USB on the left, and then we have the registered SIP endpoints on the right. And there, you know, you can see the differences from personal all the way up to large conference. That's where they fit. Not going to spend a lot of time here. Just know that we have conference phones and, uh, and, th and that we have both styles. Registered SIP endpoints to the Candy platform, and then USB, just plug and play into a smart office on a PC. So if you can jump to the next one, Sarah. Wireless collaboration, we're going to talk about headsets. So, you know, why Polycom headsets? Well, Poly headsets are, are the thing about Poly headsets is that, and when you when we get into the headset discussion, you'll see there's a ton of headsets. Because we talked about those personas before and those work styles, everybody wants something different. Some people like an over the ear headset. Some people like a dual ear covered headset. Some people like a single ear covered headset. Some people like a big boom mic, some people don't. So we've got a comprehensive line of headsets to try to uh, cover as many work styles as we can. And if you go into the Poly office in Santa Cruz, you'll see a wall of ears where we've taken all these ear molds. And then we make sure that the headsets fit that we build into all of those ear molds so that you know nobody's left behind. So that we have the right adapters to go into your ears if you're using an in-ear headset. We've got the right size to go over your ears if you're just using an over the ear. So we, we take a lot of time to do that. So there's a lot of research that goes in there, plus all of the patents and everything on, on audio. We just have the best audio version of headsets out there on the planet and the and the widest portfolio. And then we have things like ANC. So on my headset here, I've got noise block because I've got these cups that go over my ears, but I also have ANC, which is feeding noise into the headset, so it's blocking noise around me. So I can't hear the garbage truck and I can't hear the lawnmower or whatever in, around me. So I'm not distracted by what's going around me. And then I have acoustic fence capability. So when I put this boom down, I'm listening, this, this headset is listening to all that noise, so you don't hear it. So you, it doesn't go into the call. So really cool technologies that we put into these, these headsets, and we've got all the patents on them and, and, and such. So, and, and again, the variety, just the variety alone of headsets allow you to pick and choose what you need for your work style. So uh, those are some of the reasons that you, you, you would, should look at poly headsets. So let me talk about the headsets themselves. So Sarah, if you can skip to the next one. This is the Voyager family. This is the, these are the Bluetooth. Uh, the one I just showed you is the, the Voyager Focus 2 sitting on my desk. I'm lucky, I work for Poly, I get to have all these headsets. But the, the, these are Bluetooth headsets uh, anywhere from desk bound from left to right to portable. The Voyager 8200 UC is uh, a lot of people, you'll see a lot of Poly people use those actually on calls they like the over-the-ear cups it's got a built-in mic really good sound quality but a lot of people use them on airplanes jump on the airplane put your headsets on call it a night go to sleep the 6200 and the 5200 i carry both of those with me when i travel and uh, depending on what i'm doing i like the voyager 5200 if i'm mobile if i am uh walking around and i'm on a conference call on a trade floor it has a great boom mic and it blocks all the noise inbound into the call so people can't even tell I'm on a trade floor. The 6200 I like, it's a little more comfortable. You know, I can plug both ears in and I would use that in my hotel room if I'm on a call. Next, Sarah. This is, this is, so, oh, con this is so small to travel with yeah. and I just put it in my backpack. Whereas before when I had big ones that they would get so much stuff in there, they might get squished. So this is so small and compact to travel with. I love it. Yeah, the 5200 is a great little headset. I've, I've actually ridden on my motorcycle and talked to one of my peers. Now, I couldn't hear her, but she could hear me clearly. I stopped the bike and said, what'd you hear? She goes, I heard a little rumble from the pipes, but I could hear what you were saying. Well, I couldn't hear her because I had one ear open and, I'm, you know, it's got motorcycle noise. But it was really impressive. Just my own test was really pretty cool. So what I wanted to mention here is that Dave Story has done a really good job of, uh, of integrating uh, what we call Poly Hub with Smart Office. So... That gives us the ability on these headsets to do call, answer, hang up, mute, volume up, down, hold, 
from the headset. You don't have to do it from the client, you can do it from the headset. So this is uh, what we call call control integration. Um, and one thing I wanna make notice is that these are only supported by the USB. You, you can't take a headset, pair it to the radio in your PC and expect the call control functions to work. All of the call control functions happen through the hit on the USB. So just make sure you've got a USB dongle plugged in uh, from one of these headsets, a Bluetooth dongle, or you have a, a, one of the USB cabled headsets, and then you can, you know, you can support all these call control functions. And I think Dave's going to show us that in a little while anyways. Yeah, so, so Sarah, definitely stay on with us so that you can see the demo from, from Dave's story. All so right. next, so Corded, uh, our Blackwire family, if you want to just jump to the next one, Sarah. These are your basic everyday use in your office uh, USB ported headsets. The 8225 has really good acoustic fence capabilities because of the boom mic, uh, so it does some noise, noise block into the call. <clears throat> but these are these are a lower end uh, headset, but you can see, and they all come in monaural. So these I'm showing bioral, so I'm showing two ear cups, but they all come with a single ear cup if you don't want both your ears covered. But a really good Use case for these is a home office worker or a desk worker. You just leave it plugged into the USB port on your PC. You walk away, go grab lunch, whatever, come back, put your headset back on. Or if you just want to be in a private call, you've got a headset that you can choose instead of using your speaker on your PC. So really nice, nice headset, very comfortable, uh, wearable all day. Next. Next again. So we also have a next. We have a full decked line of headsets. So where you might be having uh, Bluetooth density issues because you got a lot of Bluetooth devices, or you just want to get a longer distance from your phone. So you're the type of person that wants to get up, get off a call, and go get some out of the refrigerator, or cook lunch while you're on a call, or go change your laundry, or or you know whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, sweep the front porch. You can put this on, it'll block noise around you so people don't know what you're really doing and you can have your conversations. So the, if you look at the Savvy series, it looks very similar to the Voyager series in a lot of regards. And then you get down into the portables and the portables simply mean from the 7200 on, they're decked headsets, it's decked deck radio technology, but portable means you can see the over the ear loop on, the, on, the, on these three. They also come in the box with a behind the head and the over, over the head loop. So that's why they call them convertible. You can change that loop to whatever work style that you want, but they are decked headsets and they will work with the integration that, that Dave has done. Can you go to the next slide? Uh, we sir? also have a question from Dave Lavender at iSquared. Uh, Apple is deploying or developing a new device wireless next gen Bluetooth. Is Polly working with Apple on the new wireless protocol? I, I don't know. We've I, I can't answer that uh, because I don't know what that is. The um, uh, Bluetooth was a, a Polycom development. Uh, the the guy that actually invented Bluetooth works for Polycom. So as for a while, I, I don't know if he's retired now, but certainly you know we've been associated with Bluetooth for a long time. I would imagine any changes to Bluetooth, we would absolutely be involved with that but but i have i don't have a real solid answer for what apple's doing i haven't even heard of that till just now so okay. something i can look into them so corded intense users so these will be your contact center folks um if you look at this it's called our encore pro series uh very lightweight very durable meant to be uh, uh you know and nobody really wears their headset 24 hours on what we do is we provide a quick disconnect cable that plugs into the USB port on the PC, and then you can walk up as a as a contact center agent. If you're using the same desk as somebody else, you just click your your headset into the the quick disconnect cable that's plugged into the USB. Because if you're if you're running 24 hours a contact center shop for 24 hours, and you're expecting to unplug and plug a USB headset in, you're just going to destroy your PC. Uh, USB is not meant for that kind of that kind of. Uh, it's not durable enough, and it's not meant for that kind of connectivity. So you plug one one di quick disconnect cable into your USB, then the headsets plug into the end of that dis quick disconnect cable. And there's management diagnostic capabilities or hang up etc. buttons on that DA cable. But these are meant for the contact center. And again, I'm showing mostly. Well, I'm showing two uh, bioral or monoral and one bioral. So you can get them in a, in a variety of flavors. You get two ears covered, one ear covered, uh, all with the boom microphones and with really good noise block, uh, acoustic fence into the call. 
So we do make. We did have a question also on the SYNC 20. Does it have noise cancellation as well? No, it does not. It doesn't have any noise block or noise cancellation. It's just a wide open speaker function. So that is one of the things that uh, we would look to do. It's not something that we announced in the initial product offering. So, nope. Okay, thank you. All right, Demo. we're gonna now flip over. And if you guys can stay with us, we still have a little bit more from uh, Dave Finney, uh, but I'm gonna change over and have uh, Dave's story. Uh, share his screen and give you guys a demonstration. Thanks, Sarah. Um, so today we're going to be looking at uh, the headset controls on uh, what the Smart Office client has integrated with the Polycom. Uh, so here you can see on my screen, um, we have the Smart Office client and we have the Plantronics hub software. Um, so the smart office has integrated with poly uh, such that you know we have always had uh testing and integration for the audio uh so your your headset would always work uh but the controls have also been uh, added for poly uh so here you can see that i've paired up my uh, in my devices i've paired up with my bt600 dongle uh for headset controls you do have to have uh USB connectivity, you can't connect uh, or pair the headset directly using uh, using Bluetooth. You have to go through something like a BT600. So if I were to uh, take my, uh, my Voyager 4220 here and uh, call in to say my, uh, we'll use a, my conferencing bridge as an example. Um, I can go here and I can click the mute button on this headset. And of course, if, as with all demos, it doesn't show, it doesn't work as <laughs> it's supposed to. Um, this this uh, normally is showing here for some reason, um, it may be because of how I'm showing on the screen. Uh, it's not updating the client here, it normally does. Um, but you can do volume control. Yeah. You can so you, mute. You, you will have seen answer. that I just press the uh, the side here, and you will have seen that my call ended. So I could do that again, where the call is started. You can see. I'll take my uh, headset. I'll press the button, and it should be uh, ending now. And of course, like all good demos, it doesn't work when you uh, go to show it. Um, but you can see here uh, in the Voyager Hub, uh, it will actually show. Oh, this is why. For some reason, the uh, the is unpaired. Uh, normally, you would see here in the uh, the settings that the uh, Smart Office uh, has paired. Uh, something seems to have gone wrong with my PC. Uh, such that it's not paired. Uh, and it does show in that list though when it is, correct? W yes. What does it show? Let does me, it show candy or? It will show Smart Office. There, here, there it does. Something, okay, something good. happened. Um, you can see down here in the hub, it will show that Smart Office, the desktop is now paired. So if I were to do this again, and go to my Go there, and I was. If I was to mute, you can see now on my screen. Oh, sorry. Uh, you can see now on my screen here that when I press the mute button on my headset, the mute button on the client came off. And then when I press it again, the mute came off. And then I could press for end call, and my call is ended. So that is the uh, the headset controls for integration with Smart Office. Um, of course, you can always update your volumes uh, as well, which are part of the headset. And you can answer calls as well, right? So you can. Um, I can't answer that, sir. I haven't tested that myself. Okay. I need, I'll need to go back and check with the team if they uh, if they integrated the answer function. Great, thank you. Thanks, Dave. 
All right, so um, now we're going to go back and um, let's see here, share for one again. All right, and we're going to, you guys can see my screen, right? We're going to go back and have um, Dave Finney go through the rest of this. And again, if you guys will stick with us, we only have uh, just five or so more minutes. Okay. So, so we talked about, I uh, want to talk about, uh, go ahead, Sarah. We want to talk about the personal video solutions. So the, the P series. So when COVID hit, we pivoted our roadmap a little bit to do the work from home stuff. So USB plug and play. So we have a couple of cameras and a monitor that we came out with is in addition to the sync product, and then some of those additional headsets that we've talked about. So this is the P-Series, portable cam, P5 series, the portable camera, clips onto the top of your PC, one USB port. And if you notice, there's a little door in the back. And that little door in the back opens, that's an additional USB port that you could plug a headset in. So you only need one USB port on your PC. So if you're looking for a really good at-home or portable work experience, with a good camera, other than your camera that is on your PC, the P5 is, is a really excellent camera. And, it, and this is like $120 list camera. So it's it's relatively inexpensive and very portable. Next, Sarah. And we also sell them in kits with headsets or speaker phones. So you could buy a P5 with a headset, a P5 with a sync speaker phone. Uh, you could buy it in a kit. The P15 is what I'm talking to you on right now. So it has uh, camera controls. It's been following me around. If you've seen me move, it's it's been kind of following me around. It also has acoustic fence capability. So it's blocking noise outside of me. So if I talk, eventually you'll hear me stop talking. The camera follows me, but it but the fence blocked uh, what I blocked me when I was talking. It's a little bit, it's a it's a $600 camera, it, but it's great for the home office. Uh, we're, we're coming out with a, a smaller version here in the next few weeks, but this is great for uh, for me because it's blocking, you know, dog barking, garbage can, whatever. I can use a speaker mic capability on the P15 and not have to worry about noise getting into the call. Plus, if I'm moving around, the camera tracks after me. So I don't have to worry about trying to stay in the uh, the focal area of the camera. It just follows me around. So it's really great, uh, really great camera. Again, it's it's meant to, it's for the remote uh, collaborator, if you remember the work styles, but it's also great for a small huddle room. So we have that we have the p15 and then also sarah if you would so we have a couple of questions that came in sure. uh the mm -hmm. sequence uh open between polyhub and smart office is important so you definitely need to have polyhub open first and then launch your smart office client uh sure. and dave did say yes answer does work um and um then um it, it can run in the background. Yes, it can right. be, but it does need to be running first. And um, can you disable the blocking feature, the acoustic fence, uh, when you move three feet on the left, you know, that kind sure. of thing. Can you, can you disable sure. that? You can control that, right? You can yep. make it narrow, you can make it wide sure. uh, for make you. Make it fast, okay. make it slow. Yeah, I can, I can, I can zoom in, zoom out. I can control the weight balance. There's a lot of things I can do with that camera. And that's not done through PolyHub, that's through, done through the PolyLens client. And I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. So the P21 is an all-in-one, has camera, speaker, mic, it has light adjustments uh, that you can do from the side. You slide your hand up and down the side and, and, and you get some backlighting going on so that you can, be, you can be seen better. It does not have acoustic fence or noise block in it. It's strictly a monitor, but it's an all-in-one. I used one for quite a while until I moved to a new house and then I went back to my P15 because I like to be able to show acoustic fence and the, and the camera tracking that you get with the P15. But this is a really good, uh, a really good monitor. Um, it, so it's an all-in-one and it's USB. You just plug it in and choose it and away you go. It, it is really that simple. So we tried to make these all very easy. From a management perspective, all of our video devices and our uh, headsets are controlled from a uh, from the cloud via lens. So Hub is was the existing uh, product for, hang on a sec, I think I'm gonna sneeze. Nope, I, I caught it in time. So Hub uh, was the uh, was the is the original version of headset integration into a PC uh, into a PC client. Uh, lens is going to become that integration point. So we're moving. We had three clouds. We had a, a device cloud that we got from OB Talk when we bought them. We had PMP from Plantronics, and then we had our own uh, cloud from Poly. 
And when we combined the companies, we decided that over time we have to have one cloud that manages all, all of our devices. We call that Poly Lens. And that's what we're looking at here. So with the, uh, the hub integration that, that Dave has done, that will translate to Lens when that Lens client becomes available. Uh, I am controlling my camera right now on my desktop with the Lens uh, desktop app. So I can go in and I can and I can change brightness, et cetera. And that Lens app also reports back to Lens Cloud what's going on with my camera. So I can see my camera from the cloud. So as an IT guy, it's really great because now I can see all of my devices in my network from Lens Cloud and I can manage them. I can help troubleshoot my, my, uh, my employees' problems and work on headsets, make sure everything's upgraded, et cetera. So th that's what we're doing on the management side. It's a much deeper discussion. We can have it with you if you want to, but for now, just know that we do we can manage from the cloud. And I think, Sarah, that's it. I think we're getting to the top it of the is, hour. And I think um, that's all I yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, we have several okay. of our partners who are using the PDM, uh, the device management uh, stuff. And as you said, that that is moving to the Lens Cloud. And uh, okay. those of you who may have uh, watched our previous um, voice quality and that kind of stuff where you can manage phones, even some of our device management soup to nuts on devices even. We've recommended uh, using the um, Poly device management software, uh, but that is moving over time, not yet, to the Lens Cloud. So if you, yeah, um, you yeah. yeah, great. Well, thank you so much, Dave uh, Finney, Dave Story, Jason, for being on with us. Um, and this concludes our, uh, well, I guess you had one last um, slide here on a single just, platform for everything. Yeah, just, the, just the, the, lens, the lens platform is going to manage all the devices over time. The, the phones are gradually moving in there. The video devices and the headsets are, the video devices are definitely there. The headsets are moving there. So in time, Lens will be the cloud management for all devices. So PDMS will collapse in the Lens. The zero touch provisioning that I talked about a little while ago, the new zero touch provisioning is part of Lens. So we're moving stuff to Lens and you'll hear more and more about this in the next few months and, and will be a more complete product uh, in the next few months. And then so if again, you have any questions, uh, uh, Sarah, Sarah, you asked about resellers. The best way to do this is to go to find a poly reseller is to go to that link and you'll see all kinds of partners where you can actually buy these products and set yourself up as a reseller or with a reseller or a distributor. So just want to make, make that clear. So thank you, Dave. Um, for those of you who may have just known poly in phones and, and know they're have headsets too. Hopefully this has been a good understanding of the breadth of their portfolio and understanding how uh, Candy fits in that, what we support, what we're working on, and uh, some upcoming things. So thanks everyone for joining us today. This concludes our session. I'll be sending the recording out and if this was interesting uh, for you and you want to share this with other people, then please feel free to do that. Thanks again. We appreciate Dave Finney, Dave Story, and uh, Jason Whitaker as well. Have a great afternoon or evening. Thanks. Thanks everybody.